Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is down 12. Nasdaq is up 41. S&Ps are up 13. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at uh, 40 past the hour. You can uh, check out Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlocked. Teddy Kegstad, what's going on, brother? How you guys doing? Did you have a nice Christmas? We uh, did, we man. Did. How about we, you? We were just talking about... Big Christmas. We, we, relaxing. We were just... We had way too much food. We ate for like four and a half hours <laughs> in a row. Yes, yeah, at least, right? Like, seriously. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. So, hey, currencies, what are we looking at here? The, the yen's at a buck ten forty four. It's It's taken quite a hit since our last uh, yes. time that we spoke, right? Yes. So, I think it's, well, we, we were talking about the Nikkei plunge, too, and that market... Yep. Has, I think, been the major force behind it. And also the weakness in the dollar, too. I think when we talked last, I was saying that it's not so much that you're seeing yen strength or other currencies strength so much as it is the dollar weakness. And um, especially with the interest rates right now where the market is, is no matter what, they're pulling the markets back, and especially with the short-term rates. I think that's affecting the U.S. dollar tremendously right now. Yeah, man, they're, you know, they're, they're battling over this August 15th uh, swing high in a huge way. I mean, you know, we barreled right. underneath it, you know, uh, last week and then popped right above it again, man. It's going to be, it seems like it's and a level also that... Also, U.S. dollar Swiss cannot hold that parity level, and it's getting going back down towards that 97 half area. So okay. That showed a good rejection there that the dollar is definitely not strong anymore. It's, it's, it's starting to lose its footing. Yeah. And, you know, I know currencies tend to trend for long periods of time. Is, is, there, a, is there a number on it when you really break a trend? Is it like a couple months or it can be, is, is there a number? That's, that's my question. Um, I think right now it's more of just, a, it's like a cyclical turning. So you're going to see it start, like, for instance, the pound dollar, because of the turmoil with the Brexit still, okay. it's going to be very range bound. Like, no matter how weak the dollar is, you're not going to see a major bullish sentiment towards the pound um, yeah. now other like now other currencies like especially like the australian dollar u.s dollar trade yeah i think you see a very big lift against the dollar there for the Aussie. um and then also like with the euro u.s dollar they have a lot of their they have a lot of issues with their budget um situations with the, with the multiple countries but with the weakening dollar i think you're going to see a breakout with the euro u.s dollar and it's, with a major currency like that that's when you'll start to see the baskets go in tandem with them. Right, right. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's it, it almost looks like, I was just talking to Teddy a little bit earlier that, you know, my take is that the S&Ps are going down further, and it's like the only thing that can really save the market right now is a weaker dollar. <laughs> so it's like, sure. okay, they'll start, you know, getting that baby going because as long as you spend the money in the United States, we have the same amount of money. The market goes up again in price. You know, if you're going overseas, yeah, it's going to be more expensive, but... Right. Well, that's actually the best thing to help cleans, cleanse this rally. If you have a break in the S&Ps over the next couple months, and then you see a very strong weakness, um, the dollar rather, and strength in other currencies, that's going to help us out because we need this little flushing because we've been on a rally and it's been in a terror forever. Right. You know? right. We need to have a little correction. It's not a bad thing. Right. You know, if you combine that with dollar weakness, that means earnings should be flush over the next quarters sure. going into 2019. So then we're going to have the market may be down, but the economy should be strong, the numbers should be good, earnings should be good, and if that's the case, that will support a new rally, a justified rally. Yeah, no, no, I, I, you can see it. It's kind of cool when you put it all together like that, right? Yeah, right. You know, it's, you know, the, the, the currencies, you know, if you just, if your head's not wrapped around currencies, folks, it, it takes a while. But just start one at a time. You know what I mean? You know, because it, it, it's you can see, Teddy. I mean, I, I know you're that's that's your, your bag. But currencies run everything, man. They really do. It's like okay, you know. I remember when Zimbabwe, it was Zimbabwe. It was, it was one of those countries that was having a huge inflation, and everyone's trying to figure out at the beginning of it that their stock market's going up so dramatically. Well, what people weren't watching is that their currency's getting destroyed too. Sure. So it was like, it was just a number. It wasn't totally. what you could buy. You know what I mean? I said, what was the good you could actually buy? Pretty wild. So I guess uh, with Brexit, I mean, I think we, we might be talking in here another uh, two months that they may have another vote. <laughs> I mean, I, agree. I think it's going to be March before this is really settled or 
you know, maybe on the timeline of being settled. You right. Know? At least a few more months. Yeah, it seems it. So it's going get... to be interesting to see this gold rally, if this can keep on going. Like we were talking last week about this, you know, is, it, is this bull for real? And it really looks like it is. It'd be interesting to see if gold can get back up to, say, like 1,400 level. Yeah. You know, keep oil down, see what that does for the, for the market. Now you're talking his language, Teddy. Well, you know, as well. So I was waiting, you know, I like what gold's been doing, trading. I haven't liked what silver's been doing, but today's the day, man. Today, we have 46,000 contracts right now. It has the price spread. It's just launched the consolidation going all the way back to August 15th. And that August 15th day, that was a vicious day, man. You know, so I like what's happening here. Um, when, when I'm actually looking at, so check this out today. When I'm actually looking at gold, you know, when, when I take this from the tops to the bottoms, it's like, hey, this might be the run. You know, we went from, folks, what I'm talking about too, so we went from 252 in gold in 1999. You get, you get up to uh, 1920. You do, all we did is we went back to 1051. Now that sounds like an insane amount, and it is an insane amount, but when you take this on a long term, that's not an insane amount. That's a 50% retracement of a move. Right. And we've been in a consolidation for eight years. It's like, okay, eight years. Is that ready to go? And if it sure. is, it's going to be a heck of a move. Sure. And every day that I'm looking at, like, thinking that, you know what, they have to destroy the dollar for this to get higher. It's like, okay, that's game. So, we'll see. It's like quality. Yes. Yeah, which we didn't have in 2007 and 8. That's what I liked about how this, you know, because what happened in 2007 and 8, folks, is that everything went down because no one had any money. And where this everything happening? Everything went red. <laughs> I'm sorry? Yeah, everything, everything went red. Went everything went red. Everything. <laughs> it was like it's, there's no money to be had. And in this case, all these gold equities are trading totally different than they were then. They're buying the equities. I mean, they, it looks like they, they bottomed in August to September. Do you know what I mean? So... It's going to be weird if we wake up one of these days but with, you know, and have gold up $50, $60. And if that's what you get, folks, you'll see a run that will blow your freaking mind. You keep getting down. Maybe next, year, maybe next year, guys, we'll see gold at 3000 and Bitcoin at 1200 Yeah. And then I'll sell the gold and I'll buy some Bitcoin. Oh, boy. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, I, sold, I sold gold, I sold gold for, well, I said, at 1700 I just bought real estate. So that was, that was a really good trade. There you go. And I was talking about that on the air. House at 300 it was 100 Gold at 282, 1700, just flip the position around. Sure. Cooking, brother, you have a great one, a safe one. Hey, Happy New Year, man. We're going to talk to you today. Thanks, afternoon. guys. Happy New Year. You Thanks, too. Eddie, you too. Next week. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Dow's up 36, Nasdaq's up 54, SP's up 19. We'll come right back.